Here's an exercise they never taught me in photography school. Some people say I flap my lips too much, and that is most definitely true. Yeah, I'm wearing my, uh, my hemp robe that I actually sewed myself, right? Someone's going like, I want to smoke that robe. <laughs> it is. It's twill hemp. It's actually very comfortable. I sewed this on a sewing machine. I actually do know how to use, use, do know how to use a sewing machine. Uh, no, I never smoked marijuana in my life. The smell of that stuff was gross. I don't know how anybody smokes, smokes that nasty stuff. Whatever makes you feel good, right? Um, saturation, separation, shading. I, you know, there have been many times I've been out with a speed light and bright daylight, and someone's like, why do you got a light? It's like bright out here. And I go, <laughs> uh, yeah, why do you think you're carrying a speed light in the daylight? Why? With a speed light, you can control everything. Everything is about... Well, you know, I got a nice camera and I got a nice lens. I'm like, yeah, that's true, but you know what that's good for? That's that's good for making beautiful snapshots. That most really expensive Zeiss lens and the expensive camera you got. There's one thing that you're missing. Saturation, separation, and shading. You are a slave to everything in ambient lighting, whether that's indoors or outdoors. Indoors, obviously, you need some nice uh, lighting. I'm not talking about uh, continuous lighting, like which is uh, lighting my ugly face right now. This is video lighting. You certainly can use it for photography. Not a very good idea, however. Ambient. Now, most people don't even know what high-speed sync is for. Okay. What about shooting a backlit, sub backlit subject? You know, I want to drop the ambient in the dirt. Why do I have to be a slave to uh, the beautiful lighting early morning, late evening? Even if I am a slave to that, and I want to shoot the sunrise or sunsets over someone's shoulder, for example, you know, I've got too much ambience. I have uh, far too much dynamic range between my subjects and my background. What are you going to do? You're going to, like, uh, hire a midget to hold a reflector? <laughs> the little people, you don't call them midgets anymore, right? Uh, you're going to hire a midget <laughs> to hold a reflector for you? Even that's not good enough. Saturation separation gives you definition between that's why your shots look like snapshots well i don't know why my shots look like snapshots i'm using this really expensive camera and this very very expensive lens and you know they should be better you know they kind of look like iphone photos you're right they do because it's about lighting everything is about lighting saturation separation shading what do i mean i'm talking about giving definition between the specular the midtone i.e the diffuse and shadows Defining the subject, the mood of the subject, you make a beautiful woman look like a witch if you uh, light her correctly, or in this case, incorrectly. Uh, you, you, however, can't take a really ugly woman and make her look beautiful. Well, you, you can do <clears throat> that's what <clears throat> That's what a ring light's for, by the way. Ring lights are really infamous for taking uh, wrinkles out of uh, older ladies, shall we say. <laughs> you know I'm talking about uh, what's-his-face is watching this and going, <laughs> he's laughing his ass off right now. Ambient lighting. Control over ambience, you know? What if there's too much lighting? I want to drop it into the dirt. I want to drop my ambient into the dirt. I want to compress the dynamic range between my subject and my ambient light. Whether that's backlit or not, doesn't make any difference. <sighs> there's some shots that people see, and I've seen people comment on this, that are shot in really harsh uh, 2 p.m. lighting. And it looks like it was shot uh, at sunrise or something. Like, how do you do that? Well, with a speed light or a studio strobe, you're able to do whatever you want with your ambient. You expose for your ambient however you want. You know, if you want to make 2 p.m. look like 10 p.m., that's fine. But without lighting, I mean, you're screwed. You're, you're a slave to the light. You know, if the composition demands that a person stand here... Well, you know, X amount of light is coming over their shoulder, you know, unless you have the lighting, I mean, you're a slave to the dynamic range that you have, the dynamic range of your camera, and what the ambient light gives you. You don't want to pack around a huge, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, actually. If you're going to do a paid shoot, I mean, that's perfectly fine, throw some gear in your trunk, I mean, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that why are you, why are you not packing around a speed light absolutely everywhere you go? You can't do it in a club. We're not talking about doing it in a club or 
doing it a late night concert where you can't use uh, flash photography. That's not what I'm talking about. The saturation, the separation, it gives definition. There, you know, the the lighting that you can get off of a speed light or a studio strobe, you can't get that off of a reflector. You cannot get that ultra high intensity saturation in one one hundred twenty uh, one uh, one twenty fifth of a second or one two fiftieth of a second, whatever your sync speed is, or even especially if you're doing high speed sync photography. I mean, a reflector is not going to do that. Everything in exposure is gain in time, and when you're talking about a, a speed light. Maximum power on most speed lights at T1 time is 1 1,000th of a second. That's what people don't understand. It's like, well, I'm going to crank the power up and shoot at 1 4,000th or 1 2,000th of a second, but nothing's changed. And the reason for that is, is that the T1 time, the flash duration time, is much bigger than the, the shutter speed on your camera. Everything with a speed light is just like having a knob on the ambient lighting that you have, whether that's... Uh, uh, outdoors, sunrise, sunset, you know, harsh lighting out in the desert. We're obviously not talking about landscape photography here. You know, unless you want to drop a bunch of speed lights and do uh, unique time exposures and say, uh, you know, crank it up to one one eight, one eight thousandth of a second at f16 and do some really interesting uh, um, effect lighting, like on a tree, for example, or something else like that, or paint with lighting. But that's something else. That's special effects photography. Just having a dial that you're actually able to change the ambience on your subject in relationship to the ambient. When you have total control over the subject lighting, this, and your subject, whatever that is, a model, an object, a fire hydrant, you know, a hooker standing on the street corner, <laughs> whatever it is that you want to take a shot of, when you have control over that subject, then all you have to do is decide where you want your ambient level lighting to fall. When you start thinking like that and understanding that, it's like, well, this is shitty 2 p.m. lighting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it up to, uh, this is where high speed sync comes into effect. I'm going to crank it up to 1 2,000th of a second. I'm going to crush the ambient lighting. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to take my speed light. He, since you're at one two thousandth of a second, your T1 time is uh, larger than uh, uh, one two thousandth of a second is one one thousandth of a second, so it's much larger. So you're not able to drop serious lighting for distance, but you know here to 15 feet or so, I mean more than enough to get the dynamic right. I mean then you're able to take a 2 p.m. shot and make it look like a, whatever you want it to look like. You are controlling three things: your shading your separation, and your saturation. That makes these photos pop. You want to talk about pop? I'm going to talk about micro contrast, which is another version of pop, obviously, which is inner total gradation of the shot. I'm talking about the pop that only comes not from a reflector, not from a beauty dish, not from, uh, unless it's hooked to a studio strobe, not from one of these uh, fold-up reflectors or a handheld reflector or an eyeliner dish or a diffuser panel, you, you, no, or a silver reflector or gold, for, no, only from this, a speed light or a studio strobe. That saturation, that shading, and you also need to decide where the shading falls. That's a matter for another discussion. It is about having complete control of your ambient. A lot of people think, well, speed light photography, this is the, I'm going to end up with this on the video. People, this is the fucked up part that people don't get. Yes, I cussed for emphasis. This is the effed up part that people don't get. They People think, well, you have a speed light so you can control uh, your subject illumination. It's like, well, that's half the truth, but even then, almost not really. Well, sure it is. I mean, you're not illuminating, you know, the, the hill five miles behind your subject. No, but this is for that, and then people don't get that. And that's where you actually throw them a curveball. You, you just drop a bomb right on their head, not literally, is that, yes, you are. You are controlling that. Well, how do you do that? By having this speed light, I'm able to control my ambient illumination to where I expose from my ambient and then I raise or lower my subject with this. Obviously, I have complete control over my subject with this, but I have complete control and uh, complete control of exposure and lighting 
you can't change the lighting. You can actually raise it or drop it as far as its exposure level and the, uh, the amount of exposure that you want to give it, of course. I'm not going to change it to a different color. That's what I'm talking about. But you're able to control the ambient lighting of everything. Obviously, the speed light isn't reaching out there to the hills in the background five miles away. But if I expose for those, okay, my exposure set on my camera, then I just raise or lower my subject to whatever level that I want with the speed light. So with the speed light, even though it cannot control or illuminate the ambient background illumination that you have, I mean, you have complete control over your ambient illumination because you're exposing for it however you want. Without a speed light, without a studio strobe, you don't have control over your subject illuminate. You are slave to the dynamic range that exists between the subject and the ambient illumination. But with the speed light, you have control over both. And that's what people don't get. It's like, well, the speed light only reaches out, you know, X number of yards. I don't get how I can control my ambient illumination. It's like, well, think about it. You have complete, complete control of your subject with your speed light. Yeah, I do. Well, what does that let you do then? If you can expose your subject however you want, by raising and lowering the power, moving it around, the mods, whatever you want to do to illuminate your subject, for whatever effect and composition, if you have complete control over that, then, you know, with, under any circumstance of uh, aperture and shutter speed, what does that let you do? Oh, well, that means I can actually set my exposure for whatever freaking aperture and whatever freaking shutter speed, unless, you know, you don't have high-speed sync. I mean, if you do have high-speed sync, then yes, you can. That means I can take my ambience and I can adjust uh, my exposure for whatever I want with my ambient illumination. And then I just raise or lower the power of my speed light or its distance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to my subject. That way you have control over both, and nobody seems to get that. It's like, well, this controls your subject. It's like, no, it controls your ambience as well. Everything is about controlling everything. That's kind of a stupid statement. Well, not really. I, it came out a wrong way. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, shading, saturation, isolation of your subject. You're getting separation. Shading, separation, and saturation. Complete control over your ambient illumination and your subject illumination. Why don't people talk about stuff like that? That's like really the most important thing in photography. Good question. I ask myself that all the time. I, I kind of give up ask, gave up asking that question, I suppose. So anyway, please think about that because it is insanely important. Okay, bye. Bum, 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 bum.